Some of the stories of what American war veterans have faced in real life are just incredible. For instance, you know that moment in the movie Jaws where the tough old sea captain, Quint, explains how he got that nasty scar on his arm? In 1945, he says, he was a sailor on the top secret Navy mission that delivered the newly invented atomic bomb to the Americans' secret island base in the Pacific. On the way back from that mission, Quint's ship, the USS Indianapolis, was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine and it sank. As Quint put it, 1,100 men went into the water. 316 men came out. The sharks took the rest. So here's the thing. Quint may have been a fictional character, but that story of the USS Indianapolis, that really happened. The ship went down, and only a quarter of its crew survived, floating for four terrible days in the shark-infested waters. That was 77 years ago, and just this past May, we said goodbye to one of the last of the real-life American veterans who survived the disaster. Edgar Harrell told his version of that story in his book, Out of the Depths. And in 2018, he and the other remaining survivors of the Indianapolis were honored with the Congressional Gold Medal. Edgar Harrell is only one of the remarkable United States military veterans who have died this past year. I'm Steven Siegel from Legacy.com, the world's largest network of obituaries that pay tribute to people's life stories when they die. And today, I'm going to introduce you to seven of those American heroes in this episode of Immortalized. In 1944, the tide of World War II changed when Allied forces landed on the beach in Normandy, France, to begin liberating Europe from the Nazis. Do you see those balloons in the air? Those were called barrage balloons, and the army flew them in the air above the troops to prevent German fighter planes from attacking the ground forces. Henry Parham was one of the brave soldiers of the 320th Barrage Balloon Battalion, a segregated all-black battalion that stormed the Normandy beach to launch those balloons. Henry Parham died at the age of 99 on the 4th of July, 2021, at a veterans hospital in Pittsburgh. He was the last surviving veteran of the 320th. Gail Halverson was a U.S. Air Force pilot who was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal for the incredible way he used his flying skills to help suffering children. In 1948, the Soviet Union blockaded the German city of Berlin, so the American and British Air Forces spent more than a year airlifting massive amounts of food every single day. Gail Halverson wanted to help boost the spirits of Berlin's children, so he started attaching thousands of tiny parachutes to pieces of candy, and he would waggle his plane's wings as he dropped the candy to the children below. Halverson became a legend, known to the Germans as the Candy Bomber. He died this February at his home in Utah at the age of 101. Another incredible pilot was Charles McGee, who flew 137 World War II combat missions with the Tuskegee Airmen, the elite group of black pilots and support staff. He went on to serve in Korea and Vietnam, eventually flying a total of 409 combat missions, the third most of any Air Force pilot in history. McGee retired as a colonel but Congress honored him with a promotion to Brigadier General on his 100th birthday. He died this January at the age of 102. Another World War II hero who lived to be 100 was Justice Rosenberg, who was a Jewish teenager in Poland when the Nazis invaded. His story reads like an adventure movie. He fled to France and joined the French resistance still got captured by the Nazis, escaped being sent to a concentration camp by faking appendicitis, and finally joined up with the U.S. Army. He helped guide the Army in Europe, and for his service was awarded the Bronze Star, 
and also a Purple Heart after his Jeep hit a landmine. Rosenberg died in October at the age of 100. Charles Boyd was an Air Force pilot in the Vietnam War. In 1966, he was shot down and held as a prisoner of war for seven years. After his release, his eyesight had deteriorated and he could no longer fly for the military. Nonetheless, he returned to active duty. And 20 years later, he became the only Vietnam POW ever to reach the rank of four-star general. After he finally retired in the 1990s, General Boyd continued serving his country, leading a commission on national security. Just months before the 9-11 attacks, his commission delivered a report warning of terrorist threats to American soil. He died March 23, 2022, at the age of 83. And finally, we salute the life of Vivian Millie Bailey, who joined the Women's Army Corps when it was founded in 1942 and became one of its very first black officers. Like the regular army at the time, the Women's Army Corps was mostly segregated during World War II, as seen in this picture of the 68-88th Battalion. Lieutenant Bailey served at Fort Sam Houston, Fort McClellan, and Fort Benning, where she led Women's Detachment No. 2. After the war, she went on to a long life of public service, with the VA and other organizations, first in Chicago and then in Howard County, Maryland. During the Vietnam War, she started a care package campaign called Bailey's Bundles, which is still active and helping troops today. Millie Bailey died May 1st, 2022, at the age of 104. To help support American veterans this Memorial Day season, you can join Legacy in giving to the Wounded Warrior Project. Just click the donate button on this video's YouTube page. You can read more about the lives of the people featured in this video on Legacy.com. You can also follow Legacy.com on Facebook and subscribe to our channel on YouTube to stay up to date on obituary news and memorial tributes.